Hello. In the previous two videos, uh, I have explained to you um, uh, the idea and the theory and the possible approaches we can use in order to uh, solve the uh, uh, problem of nonlinear regression. And in the uh, last video today, I will uh, talk uh, about the polynomial degree selection. And uh, uh, this is a, um, a very interesting topic of how you can decide about the degree of complexity or the, or the degree of uh, polynomial functions that you uh, need to use in order to uh, learn your function or your nonlinear function. So if we have a data set as shown here in this, in this plot, uh, uh, we have a set of observations that are um, definitely have nonlinear relationship. And the question is always uh, like this, which polynomial function should we use or uh, which uh, degree of complexity of simplicity should we use in our function in order to uh, obtain um, uh, precise predictions of our, of our values of our, of our problem. Um, so, if we use uh, for this particular data set a linear function like this one, like the uh, uh, green line here, uh, here we use the uh, uh, function of a polynomial degree of 1. And we can see that this uh, function is highly biased, which means that it generates a, a very l a big value of error if you compute it using the least square approach you will find that the distances between the uh, target values and this function is very large and uh, it cannot represent the true relationship between predictor x uh, and, and target variable y. So uh, in the most cases, this uh, selection will generate inaccurate results of your uh, data or, if you, or of your predictions. Um, in this case, uh, we call the scenario an underfitted uh, um, scenario or uh, the generated model is an underfitting model because it cannot simulate the true relationship between predictor variable x and target variable y. And it, uh, this scenario will definitely lead to inaccurate results if you try to use the, the, the linear model in order to predict nonlinear relationship. If we go to the other extreme situation where we use a very um, um, complicated uh, uh, nonlinear function, here for instance for a set of observations uh, equal 20, I used a, a polynomial degree of 19. Uh, and as you can see here that this is a quite complicated function and has a very uh, uh, difficult uh, mathematical definition uh, to learn. It has a very uh, long list of, of coefficients to compute. And overall, uh, you, you can see that here, although this, uh, the generated function can very good learn the uh, relationship between the training data set, it can act very uh, poorly on the unseen data if you have uh, uh, another test data that you need to uh, uh, apply your uh, model on it. This type of, of, of functions will generate very um, bad results and a very low accuracy of the unseen data because it was a very highly um, uh, 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 varied on the uh, subset of training data, but it cannot understand the data that the model has not seen before or has not uh, learned before. Uh, so this situation, we call it an overfitting situation. And uh, again, uh, the, the same thing about uh, what we have said about the um, uh, underfitting uh, model, we can also say about the overfitting model, uh, such that it still generate a very poor results on the unseen data. So what we're really trying to find is a, a function with a moderate uh, degree of polynomial. It is not very high, not very low. 
And uh, for instance, uh, uh, for this particular uh, observations, we find that the uh, uh, nonlinear regression of polynomial three can uh, very good uh, understanding our observations and can best fit our data such that it, uh, it is uh, simple enough to, to learn and to calculate uh, from the uh, computational point of view, as well as uh, it is uh, also uh, um, uh, better to understand the uh, unseen data rather than either the uh, uh, linear function or the uh, very high polynomial function. So uh, this uh, case, we, uh, in this case, we, we, we always try to find uh, some sort of trade-off between the BS and various situation or between the underfitting and the overfitting scenarios. And uh, this uh, cannot be uh, learned uh, directly. This is a trial and error um, uh, procedure. Uh, which means that you always try to uh, use multiple values of p and try to find the value of b which suits your particular data, which uh, fits your particular problem, uh, such that you have uh, a certain um, uh, trade-off between the underfitting and the overfitting scenarios. A, a very good uh, way uh, to, to reach your goal in, in, in this situation is called a regularization um, uh, approach. And in the regularization approach, we add uh, an extra term to our uh, error function, which is called the regularization term. Uh, this term is express, expressed by a, uh, 0.5 or uh, 1 half multiplied by lambda. Uh, and lambda here uh, is called the uh, coefficient parameter uh, multiplied by the summation of uh, coefficients WP to the power of 2. Uh, so uh, this is an, a new uh, definition of our uh, uh, error function and uh, we aim behind this definition to have um, uh, an easy way to um, uh, find our um, uh, BS various trade off of the of the targeted nonlinear hypothesis, such that we uh, we have this uh, this uh, function that can best fit our data, as well as understand the uh, uh, unseen data uh, that we we try to learn or we try to predict. So. Um, here, as you can see, that we have a new parameter lambda, uh, and uh, uh, this parameter is um, uh, acting as a, a control parameter of the regularization uh, process, uh, which means that if lambda is a very large, uh, is set to very large value, then the generated model will be very simple. Most likely, it will be a linear model. And if lambda is a very small value, the generated model will be very, very complicated model uh, close to the overfitting scenario. And of course, if lambda is equal to zero, then we uh, are in, uh, outside the regularization uh, process. This term will, uh, will be deleted and we return to the, our regular uh, error function. So here is a, 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 a simple example of how we can select the lambda. In both cases, we used a very uh, sophisticated uh, function. We said uh, p equal 9 for 10 observations. So here we have uh, n equal 10 and p equal to 9. And we use this uh, 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 regularization uh, uh, form of, of our uh, error function. So when we said lambda equal to 100, very high value, we see that the generated function is almost a uh, linear function, is a very simple uh, function. Although we have a very high level uh, or a, a, a high value of, of uh, polynomial. We, we said p equal to n minus one, which is, very, which is supposed to generate a very complicated function if the uh, uh, regularization term does not exist. But here, when we said lambda equal to 100, we see that the uh, term here is, uh, the generated model is a very simple model, uh, almost a linear one. And uh, on the other hand, uh, if we said lambda equal to zero, 
we, s we can see that here the generated function is touching almost every single observation, which means that we reach an uh, overfitting scenario with a very highly complicated uh, model of, of uh, our hypothesis, of our nonlinear hypothesis, which is also uh, not a desirable approach. So we try to always find selecting uh, lambda values such that we have uh, some point in between these two uh, scenarios of either underfitting or overfitting. Um, uh, so uh, again, we, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, this is a very simple approach. This is a, uh, the generated uh, function here is very simple, which means this is an underfitting scenario. Here, the generated function is very complicated, which means is an overfitting scenario. Uh, so uh, the way we, we apply the regularization uh, uh, procedure is that we start to start to we start with a very uh, or a reasonable high value of lambda, such that we uh, generate a, a, a simple model uh, as possible, and we start to uh, decrease the value of lambda step by step. So here we start by 100, it's a linear function. When we decrease it to uh, 10, we s now start to uh, see some level of, of non-linearity in the generated model. So it is not very, uh, very uh, linear, but it started to take uh, smoothly uh, more than one direction. Uh, if we decrease it once again to one, we uh, can see here that it, it take almost uh, maybe um, uh, three uh, directions, but we cannot see it in this, this plot because the, the um, uh, extreme values of the, of, or the uh, maximum and minimum values is not covered in this range of, of y. If we uh, decrease it once again to uh, 0 0.5, we can uh, almost uh, find uh, an, an output or a uh, generated uh, uh, function of um, uh, three directions, one, two, three. So as more as we decrease the value of lambda, as more as we get more um, uh, realistic uh, simulation of the, of the uh, uh, training data, and as more as we can get a more, say, complicated uh, uh, function in terms of the level of, uh, or the degree of uh, polynomial. Here we decrease it again to 0 0.05, and we see that it starts to really take um, multiple directions and start to get more and more complicated. And if we approach to zero, we reach the, uh, the extreme of overfitting, such that we, we have a function that is um, uh, almost exact, the, the touching the, all of the um, uh, training observations, and it has an error rate of zero, but it has a very poor performance um, with the unseen data. So uh, this is the way uh, the regularization uh, uh, procedure is working. We starting by a, a high value of lambda, and we start to decrease the step by step until we reach um, um, uh, a level of complexity that is not overfitting, but still can understand and can better understand the uh, many trends and many directions of, of our data set. Uh, and uh, one important note uh, to mention here, uh, you, you, you may note that uh, within the uh, regularization term, we excluded the uh, intercept uh, coefficient w0 from this term. So we, we calculated or we multiplied the uh, parameter lambda with the summation of uh, coefficients b, where b moved from one to uh, the maximum uh, degree of polynomial. And uh, the reason we excluding the um, uh, intersect coefficient w0 is that the intercept uh, uh, coefficient w0 has nothing to do with the simplicity or complicity of the generated function. Uh, the only thing that the w0 uh, can do is that uh, it can move the uh, generated model uh, uh, close to or away from the origin um, uh, point of, of, of your uh, 
uh, space of your data space, but it has, has nothing to do with the uh, level of complexity or, or to the number of directions the generated uh, function will have. Uh, so this is why we exclude it from the uh, regularization term uh, shown here. So uh, uh, again, uh, we can uh, apply the same procedures we have learned before um, into the, the, uh, the regularization procedure. So we can uh, uh, again uh, differentiate the error function with respect to each uh, value of, of, uh, of each value of coefficients W. And uh, we can always uh, uh, also compute the, the uh, 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 derivative of the uh, regularization term with respect to W. So here we obtain our uh, traditional um, uh, term uh, of derivatives that we have computed in the previous uh, two videos, plus the derivative of the new regularization term with respect to each uh, uh, coefficient value WP which will be here uh, the uh, uh, derivative of uh, lambda of uh, one half lambda multiplied by uh, WP square. Um, uh, uh, this will be simplified uh, to this term. It will be um, uh, uh, the, the same uh, uh, derivative value of error function plus uh, lambda multiplied by WB. Here we notice that when we uh, uh, compute the derivative of WP square with respect to uh, a single WP, all of the terms rather than WP will be vanished. We will uh, end only with the WP square. And when we differentiate this value, we will obtain uh, uh, lambda multiplied by WP. The square will uh, delete the uh, 0.5 value. So we will uh, set this uh, uh, derivative uh, to zero. And in order to uh, apply the uh, closed form approach, we will translate this uh, equation into a matrix form. It will take this matrix form here. And uh, when we rearrange it, put in the, uh, the matrix of uh, target value uh, variable in the left-hand side, and all the uh, uh, other terms uh, multiplied by the coefficients in the right hand side. And we will uh, send the uh, vector of coefficients w outside here. So we'll uh, send it outside multiplied by x transpose x minus uh, lambda multiplied by i. And we will solve uh, this um, equation in order to uh, find the uh, vector of coefficients into a closed form. It will be equal to uh, x transpose x mi minus uh, nabla multiplied by the identity matrix all to the power of minus 1 multiplied by uh, x transpose multiplied by y. Um, uh, and in the, uh, regarding the gradient descent, we will follow the same um, uh, approach we have discussed earlier in, in, in the course of nonlinear regression. Uh, the only point that you need to take care of when you applying the gradient descent with the regularization procedure is that you always keep the um, um, W0 coefficient, the first coefficient of your, uh, of your equation, uh, outside the uh, regularization system because as we have mentioned before, uh, it has nothing to do with the complexity or simplicity of the generated function. So it is computed um, uh, outside the regularization procedure. And within the regularization procedure starting from WP, where P is starting from 1, uh, we use the same uh, derivative uh, value of the uh, uh, error function, uh, adding by the or, or uh, uh, plus the uh, regularization term, uh, which is corresponded to nabla, uh, which is corresponded to uh, uh, lambda multiplied by the w of p. And again, I will add the, a link of, uh, of my um, uh, repository where, I, where you can find uh, the implementations of all of these methods 
uh, in Python. Uh, and I encourage you to uh, test it uh, yourself and uh, to have more um, understanding of the topic and how uh, uh, all of these methods and algorithms are uh, running uh, on practice. So thank you for your time.